Hi, I'm Phil Constantino. On this episode of Travels with Phil, we're going to the Kingdom of Tonga and look at the eruption, the tidal wave, and my own personal connection to the king and the prime minister there. Tonga is located out in the southwestern part of the Pacific Ocean, just a little bit east of Australia, north of New Zealand. Well, not just a little bit, quite a bit, and just to the east of Fiji. And you can see it's on this volcanic ridge out there. And it's a series of small islands, one of the smallest countries in the world. It's a kingdom, in fact. Well, out in the middle of the ocean, occasionally they have undersea volcanic eruptions. And back in January 2015, a new island came into existence. Now, this was the first time in about 50 some odd years. Surtsey was the other one up toward Iceland. And you can see here from these uh, movies done by the uh, Tonga Navy, uh, this was uh, uh, just a complete island was created here out of the ocean depths and it built up over a period of time. Now the island itself uh, had two islands there and there was an open space in between them. Well, starting in the 2015 op uh, eruptions, another island built up and eventually it sort of worked built up more, built up more, eroded a little bit, built up more, eroded a little bit, and turned into one longer island. Well, the eruptions continued. Now, satellites were monitoring on January 15th, 2022, and this is what they saw. This was the eruption out there of this small area. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, the Hunga Tonga, and then the rest of that volcano. And this was an underwater eruption, which uh, happened right in this immediate area here. I'm going to switch to a different angle over here in a second, and you'll be able to see it from a different spot. Now, this, these are satellites that are many thousands of miles up in space. And here you can see Australia over to the left. And then right in the center of the screen, you can see where it's erupting. They're just about sunset local time. There's a bigger uh, view of it, or a more close view of it as it comes about. So again, north of New Zealand, east of Australia and then an overhead shot here a little gif images a series of individuals photos put together to make sort of a motion type not only did it have this eruption but it also started a tidal wave now we're going to show you some uh, videos of this tidal wave now this is on Tonga itself now unlike the big one that happened in Indonesia several years ago this was not a 10 or 15 or 20 foot wave but as you can see here, this really came into the city. It cut off a lot of electrical, it cut off internet connections. And so a lot of what happened here, the information we got was from very, very much in the beginning. So what's my personal connection here to the island of Tonga? Well, back in the 1970s, I was a talk show host, radio interviewer on KULF Radio in Houston, Texas. And there's an old picture of me. And I worked with a guy named Dan Lucas in the evening show called Houston at Night. And he was reading in a newspaper article that somebody in Tonga was trying to convince people around the world that fruit bats were a delicacy. Evidently, they had so many fruit bats that they figured they'd try to export them and make some money. So, uh, hmm, I've never heard of bats being a fruit delicacy or delicacy, or fly foxes, perhaps you want to call them. Well, who was it that was promoting this? Well, it was the king right there. <laughs> Dupu the fourth. Now he was one of the longest reigning kings in the world. He died in uh, about 15, 20 years ago. So Dan says, "Well, let's call him up." I said, "Okay." And I figured, "Well, where else will we reach him? Royal Palace." So I asked International Long Distance to help me get to the Royal Palace. The guy that answered the phone was the Prime Minister. That's how small this country is. So I asked him, I said, you know, hey, is the king available so we can do an interview? And he says, "Well, he's in the other office right now." But we set it up. We arranged it. And eventually we got the interview, and yes, indeed, it appears the fruit bats belonged to the king, and he was trying to export the fruit bats as a delicacy. But it didn't go over very well. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below, as long as the language is family-friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right-hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.